Hi, everybody. Welcome to Iris and Claire. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about Drift. Ooh. You know. I get your drift, boat. <laughs> get it? I used to drift a lot in my younger days. <laughs> yeah. It's like an, an aimless wanderer. No. I mean, I used I, to drift. I drift a lot now. <laughs> Just drift in and out. <laughs> I used to drift in my car. Um <laughs> back but that's what you're supposed to do bro. i um you know i my first car was a 1982 volvo okay? <laughs> yeah okay. and this and this thing had rear wheel drive yeah and when there was one millimeter of snow on the ground that thing would fishtail like nothing <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> little did yeah. i know that i was on the cusp of the trend of the, of the auto racing trend of the 2000s you know my my old roommate the west had one of these old trucks mm, that, yeah. would, that would do the same gimmick. You'd think, oh, i got a truck. I could. Do, do, he couldn't go anywhere. No. The second one drop of rain was in the ground, the rear end of that thing was bebopping around. So, yeah. But, you know, it's funny. Drifting was sort of a uh, – uh, it just sort of came out of nowhere as a as – a, uh, as a as a uh, car thing, as an event for cars, because there was a time where there was no drifting. I never heard of it. Mm -hmm. The only time you ever see a lot of drifting is if you watch old Starsky and Hutch episodes or something, where they they'd skid around a corner or something. It was cool to see. I didn't know they'd make a sport out of it, but they have apparently. Yeah, yeah. So now you've have you ever? Um, I think we we've talked about uh, in one of our previous episodes experience in in various sports cars, but remind me again, what is the the closest thing to a sports car that you've ridden around in? You know, really not much. My dad used to have an old Mustang mm -hmm. I that think was that sort counts. of yeah. Uh, uh, again, I have not ridden in the Batmobile, but I did get to sit in it. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, no one I know has a real honest to God sports car. You know, of all people who used to have a little, one of these little kit cars was Hose. Really? If you can believe it. I yeah. can't imagine Hose getting into one of those things. Well, his, his girlfriend is like a, is like a hobbit or something. She's real She's, tiny. You mean his wife now? So yeah, yeah. At the time she was just, so she could be bop in and out of this thing, right. but poor old Hose uh, getting in and out of this thing. It's, it's like, like watching you know, Patsy and Adina getting out well, of the car. You've seen the Duke boys slide into the window, the General Lee. This would be like if, if Uncle Jesse or Cooter tried. <laughs> Just a, arms and elbows everywhere, <laughs> one leg in, arms sticking out. Uh, and I told him, I used to laugh when he, I'd see this car, but they got rid of that thing. Hose uh, couldn't get in that thing no more. Those things are small, but they're not built for guys like us. I know, you know? It. I know it. Um, I've never been in a in a real sports car. I don't know if you'd call the DeLorean. The DeLorean is just a weird looking car. I don't think it was necessarily built for like massive speed. I um, think it's cool looking. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of sporty. You but know? I've never been in like a Porsche or a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or any of that stuff before. So maybe one you day. Know, let's let's talk about these uh, uh, these stupid films that are out now. The uh, what Fast are these and things the called? No, no, the car films. Fast and the, the Furious. The, yeah, the Fast and the Furious. Sorry, I misheard you there. I happen to, you know, I went that we we've been in we've been uh, uh, in a pandemic here, right? So you can't go nowhere, right? So finally, I took Tree and the boy to go see the boy's grandpa at his apartment, and they had to, they had a Fast and the Furious marathon mm -hmm. boat mm -hmm. for the sucker that could sit through that. <laughs> so I'm sitting there watching these movies, you know, because these things are big hits, right? right? There's drifting, there's thrifting, there's cars jumping over boats and helicopters. And I think to myself, this is the most stupid, brain-dead film I've ever seen. <laughs> but it's so, and so I, I, and I've got a question, I'm leading up to it. It was so brain-dead and stupid. At the end of this one particular one, they jumped a car onto a, onto a boat, mm -hmm. all right, you know. So, and, but I was watching this unfold and unfurl in front of me, and it was so stupid that I enjoyed this. I enjoyed, like, they would take stupid and it'd go even dumber. Like, right. they were going way down. So, I guess, are these films meant to be ironic? Or I, are these serious movies, both? I have never seen any of these movies, but however, I do You've listen. You've never seen them? No. But I listen to a podcast where they talk about them all the time. Yeah. And the general consensus is that the first one and maybe the second one were supposed to be serious films, but all the rest of them, they, the tongue is firmly in the cheek of all okay. the rest of these. See, yeah. I can get behind that. I actually saw the first couple on riff tracks, you know, because mm -hmm. they were so wacky. Mm -hmm. You know, what's that? What's the bald guy that's in there? He was is, in X. Is it Van Damme? Van, no, no, uh, Vin Diesel. Vin Di this is right? the same guy. 
Yeah, he's no, he's an RPG guy, by the way. He plays, he does some D and D, so I'll give him that. And he's a video game guy. But I watch those triple X films from uh, back. Those are horrible movies too. They're so stupid. But it's like he took those movies and said, "We could do worse. Let's go." <laughs> lower and they did and these these fast and the furious movies they have like uh the rock in them they've got all these big star power yeah it's amazing to me how dumb they are i mean they just you have to be well it's a good time film you know you go and you you eat your popcorn and you joke around with your friends the whole time yeah i guess so i mean but i can't I picture a guy sitting in his living room, and when the car jumps onto the boat, he's like, "Yeah, that could really happen." You know, that's the Nobody kind of guy that, that. I, I want to meet. That guy, I think they, I think it, some people think it could. <laughs> well, I can't think of any better lead-in to talk about this week's game, Aaron Drift. Why don't you tell us about it? When I was playing this game, that's all I thought about. By the way, <laughs> was just that I felt like I was been a really inept Vin Diesel <laughs> or Rock as I staggered around these turns. So there's not a whole lot to, in, in terms of a backstory, for this this came out in 2019, developed by an outfit called Zosa Entertainment. Now, uh, Zosa was entering this in a contest uh, that was ran at the Yandex Museum. It's a it's a it's a contest to you know to make ZX Spectrum games. Mm-hmm. This came in this came in fourth. That is insane. Fourth. That is insane. Vote. Uh, so that tells you they were cranking out some crap. Uh, this uh, this whole outfit's out of St. Petersburg, Russia, boat. Oh. So I guess there's a big ZX Spectrum scene in Russia. Yeah, the Z9 way, Scorpion, man. Yeah, I had to dig deep to try to find anything about this because it's funny. I-, I look at this game. Yeah. I look at it. I'm like, this is going to be the bell of the ball. And then, there's probably anybody talking about it. I'm like, what's going on here? Right. Did I miss, did I miss was something it, Was here? it because it was all, all the information was in Russian? No, well, I listen, they've got tra- Google Translate, brother, which I used mm-hmm. a lot. But, I mean, people know about it, I thought. So, uh, anyway, this is a uh, this was a freebie, you know. Uh, the, uh, so, I can tell you the group members of, of Zosa are Natasha Z- uh, Zatova and Oleg Origin. And I think the music was done by a guy named Jet Z80, but I can't confirm that. Okay. And, of course, it's a... 128k spectrum now uh uh the the billing for this game uh, uh this is a, of course the game called drift the, there are six different stages uh which i didn't see all of boat uh there are 12 different tracks including reverse tracks you get 24 tracks boat which i didn't see all of uh you can go between amateur and professional difficulty uh this is all from the back of the box i guess or, the, or this is how they plugged it there is no box you get a realistic engine sounds, sound, a sampled speech, real life geolocations. Uh, that's true. Sixteen rival drivers, three hundred sixty degree panoramas, boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, on and off switchable dynamic shadows. Uh, you can you can uh, be a righty or a lefty and play it, and it's got damage and car repairs, boat. This thing has now, got options to beat the band. That's right. Now. Uh, uh, this thing comes on, and even the boot up screen is is you look at it and you're just like holy smokes, and the boot up screen's not as good as the actual graphics in the actual game. Right, I can say without hesitation uh, that this is the most uh, incredible looking uh, ZX Spectrum I've ever seen. I mean, there's nothing even in the, in the ballpark on this one. Let me, this let, thing is off the freaking charts. Let me tell you how this affected me. I started playing this. You? Yeah, I started playing this game like I always do every week on Spectaculator, the emulator, right? Mm-hmm. And I get into this thing, and I just start shaking my head, you know, with every new scene. I'm just shaking. I'm just like, there is no way that this is running on an actual 128k yeah. spectrum. There is no way. I'm gonna and prove it to myself right up. now. So I, 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 I put this tap file on an SD card. I put the SD card in the Div MMC future, hooked it up to the plus two, fired it up. And I was blown away. I mean, it really <laughs> works on a real 128K. It's insane. You know, I, 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 it is insane. Yeah. And, I, and the funny thing is, so I've tried this. I tried this on a, a my usual crap emulator, right? Crap calculator, whatever mm-hmm. it's called. It's a cheap one. And it would load up to the point where you could start the race. And when you hit the button to start the race, it wouldn't start the race. Mm. So I had to break out the second worst emulator. But I got it to work on that. It worked fine. So this thing kicks up. 
and the music kicks in and the music is just awesome it's so good am i wrong here it's Bones? so good it's just the, it's it's just so the best good. music you ever heard on the spectrum ever uh find me, oh, find me better music i demand it okay it's at least in, in the running it's How about in the that? running this thing unfurls itself in front of you with this opening montage of people drifting in their car okay this thing's awesome when this thing starts up by the time it's over, I was ready to go out and get in my actual car and start taking the Jeep around corners at lightning speed, boat. I'm jumping. I'm going to got jump you fired up. On boats. I mean, I was ready to do some drifting, brother. So uh, you start off the the game with a menu. You set your controls up. I played this with a keyboard, boat. I don't know how you did it. Is that You played the stick on this one? Oh, yeah. I can't. I mean, I guess you could play it with the keyboard, but that seems very difficult. Well, hey, you know me. Because it was so easy, I thought I'd make it harder. Yeah. So... You set up the keyboard. You, uh, you it's uh, the start menu is quite. It's brain dead simple. The way they should be. Mm -hmm. Here are your options. You got go redefinable to, keys. You got the whole shebang. That's right. The whole shebang. You start this thing up, and you get to pick your car. And there now there at the start off. There are two cars: the Sabrina and the Julia. Then there, I've, I've, from what I hear, there are four cars you can unlock. I never unlocked Jack Squat, and I'm lucky that other that cars you start off with didn't get locked. As I, as I played it, because I was so bad at it. So once this happens, and I should mention, everything about this game is is awesome. I mean, every single part of the menus is awesome. The There's a there's a uh, uh, like a tire track that comes on the screen in between uh, when you're transitioning, mm -hmm. and it looks awesome. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it, Boat? There are, it, uh, there, I mean, they everything that you always wish that people would have gone the extra mile, you know, when, when we talk about other games, these guys have gone the extra mile in every single category. They've done every, so much stuff that they didn't have to do. Exactly. Every, these are like, you could tell it. Remember we said, Hey, a demo group must've worked on this. Cause it's got all the little baloney, all the, all the catchy crap that you'd see. In the That's this. Yep. This has everything, the, everything like you could just spell out the name of the game. Nah, that's for suckers. The name of this game comes out, and it spins around in 3D. Mm -hmm. It's flying around. It's going crazy. You get the tire track. When the when little pictures of the different uh, of the different car uh, drivers come on the screen, they come on and they spin they around. Spin, they're yep. in 3D, and they're all like, I don't know. I'm assuming there's made up names, but there's still there's like eight guys on the screen or whatever. And those are your competitors, and it's drift off. Then it tells you where you're going. The first one's in Oslo, and then you get this awesome shot of the car being towed to Oslo right. on the back of this truck. Awesome. With parallax scrolling boat, it looks like a million bucks. Mm -hmm. You're just like, here comes the drifting. I'm going to drift the crap out of this thing. Then, it show then you're in Oslo, and you see in the background crap that you would see in Oslo. There's a big boat back there. Mm -hmm. There's a dock. You know, It looks awesome, boat. And then you try to play the game. Now, <laughs> this is where I fell off a cliff. And I knew, because the name of this game is Drift, I've played other games where you have to drift, and I've sucked at every single one of these things. It's Drifting is a bizarre concept to me. I'm Racing, I'm okay. Drifting is tough. And this game is one of those games. It, you know what it reminds me of, Boat, is Dragster. Mm -hmm. Remember Dragster? Yep. Uh, Dragster was a game where if you didn't understand the philosophy of the game, you just hit some buttons, nothing happened, and you're like, this is garbage, right? and you quit. 99% right? of the people that play Dragster are right. like that. And I was like that before we did that ARG all those years ago, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but this game is very similar to that. If you stick around and try to and practice you can get to the point where you're not totally embarrassing, and then, assumably, you can get to a point where you're actually competent. Right. I couldn't get past the totally embarrassing aspect, but I understand that you can. But it's not a game where you're going to sit down and be like, well, I'm going to play this card game. You hop in, and then you go out and you suck, and you give up, because that's what can happen easily if you don't give it a shot. So what did you think of this boat, and how proficient were you out of the gate? Um, I felt like... At the very beginning, of course, what you have to realize at the beginning is that this is not a game where you're going to put the pedal to the metal, like ever. You you, you take this easy, and it's the, the 
the realism is somewhat suspended because you can drift at very low speeds in this game. Part of the excitement yes. of uh, part of the yes. excitement of real drift racing is that in order to get your car to slide across the pavement sideways, you have to be going pretty fast. You can't be going 25 miles an hour in a school zone, you know. Mm -hmm. Now in this game, you can drift at pretty much whatever speed you want, and that makes this game. It's the only thing that saves this game from being impossibly difficult. <laughs> you can drift. You could be like trying to just get back onto the onto the track and go like two miles an hour and just start drifting. Right, right. <laughs> it was bizarre. Now, um, I will say that I feel like I don't know. Did you play any of the um, GameCube Mario Kart? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was that double? Was double, double dash, dash on yeah. there? Yeah, yeah. Double yeah. dash has the mechanic that is closest to this mechanic of all the Mario Kart games in terms of because every game, every Mario Kart game, they sort of change the way that they do drifting, and uh, double dash was very similar to 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 this. Um, I didn't really have any trouble like mastering drifting. Uh, I didn't have any trouble um, like controlling my vehicle. What I did have trouble with was knowing where the track was. That is yeah. uh, number one with the bullet, the, the worst aspect of this game for me is yeah. that they do not differentiate. If you're not, if you're listening at home, uh, this game is monochrome. Uh, you're the entire play field is monochrome and then the HUD is, is multicolored. Well, so, sometimes the background, like the upper background will be a different color uh, from the lower that's background. That's true, it's that's like, true, yeah. that's true. Um, so the, the track and the not track are not separated other than uh, some traffic cones, okay? Now, I know that there is a sport called autocross. Uh, our buddy Mike Lilly does this, where they set up cones in a parking lot and you run around the cones as fast as you can go. Um, not actually run, of course. So this is a, Mike does this? Yeah, <laughs> in, in a car. Mike has a, he has a performance automobile. Um, That's hard to believe. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, uh, you you have to stay within the cones to 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 complete these tracks. There's a timer that if you go outside, if you're outside the the track for too long, then the you, then you'll be disqualified. Um, Happen a lot <laughs> because there is no differentiator in color between the track and the not the track. I found it very difficult to sometimes know where the track was, especially when when turns would come up. I wouldn't know exactly where the turn would be or how wide the road would be. And the do they the the, the way that they they scale the size of the traffic cone sprite, you could tell they were doing that to help you out, but it wasn't enough for <clears> me. I couldn't. I feel like the only way I could really get comfortable with this game is if I almost memorized the tracks, and I'd have to know yeah. exactly what I was doing at all times. Well, I will say we should mention that before you start the race, they show you the track, right? And then, and which is awesome. And then at the bottom of the screen on the left, they have a little. And this is amazing, boat. Just the fact that they can do this. There's a little like uh, picture of, the, of of you on the track. Yeah, you know, like a like now, a ma like a mapping. Now, uh, for some reason, when I was playing this game, yeah. I never, I I did not understand what that was, and I didn't know that it was there. So you didn't I, pay attention to it. Yeah. So I, I just like when I looked down there, I thought that was actually like your gear shift or something like that. Uh -huh. But well, now I that I, I now that I see that, this yeah. game might have been easier for me. Well, I will say I didn't pay much attention to it either because I was too busy panicking. You're right. What you said is true. Uh, what this and this is a limitation and of the system, and that is what you need. What would be ideal would be orange cones mm -hmm. that would help you on this dull white or blue or whatever background you're on at the time. But since they're all the same color, you can absolutely get lost. Uh, that was the least of my problems is I would just skid out of control. Out, out of I got DQ'd, you know, I got DQ'd a lot. You know, I got DQ'd more than Abdullah mm. down in Puerto Rico. <laughs> and so it was, I had a heck of a time even just finishing a race, just staying. Listen, I've never been a guy uh, uh, that was good at staying in the lines, and this game was no exception. I was all over the map, and so it made it difficult. I was, this is not my kind of game. We should mention that at the bottom of the screen when you're when you're playing, you've got an RPM meter and a speed meter, and you've got that little map. Uh, and so these are vital uh, to how you're going to drift because you've got to you've got to there, there's a there's a method to how, your speed versus your RPMs when you're drifting. It's very I had a heck of a time coming to grips with the concept of how to get the drifts off. I had to, but, but what was harder was how to stop the drifts and actually get your car lined back up to keep going. Mm -hmm. That was tough. We should we would be remiss without mentioning the fact that when you in the actual gameplay of this, when your car's up there, 
It is unfreaking believable. Car rendered in 3D with shadowing. Yeah. The whole play field rendered in 3D, complete with buildings you have to avoid, mm -hmm. with a scrolling background. We just played Speed Racer for the Coco that had that background. This background is some, this is a freaking background. Yeah. Speed Racer, take notes. This looks, I've never been to Oslo boat, but I'm guessing this is what it looks like. There's boats and craft back there. When they say on the, on the, on the description, 360 degree background, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. When you're any direction you're going on, you're seeing different stuff and it's realistically scrolling with how your car is turning. The graphics on this thing can't be overstated. They're off the charts. Absolutely. They're off the charts. Now, so I'm thinking to myself, Boat, as I'm playing this game, first of all, I can see why they released this game for the contest, okay? Drifting is sort of a, a big deal and it's sort of the hip thing to do. Now, if I've got this sort of action, if I got this sort of prowess, Jack, uh, I'm, I'm going to put out some sort of racing game for the common man that can't do this. You've got this sort of. I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see a full-on racing game, like a Lotus Two style game, like with this sort of uh, setup. It would be awesome. To me, uh, I, I, I drifting just not my thing, and so that took it down a, a couple notches for me, just because it's not my bag. If it is your bag. This game is going to blow you away. It's probably going to blow you away regardless. And if this had came out in, like, I don't know, 88 or something, people would be baffled at what they were seeing, Boat. I mean, even a, remember when they released uh, Pinball uh, Dreams for the CPC last year? Mm -hmm. And we looked at this thing. We couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe This is even more stunning than that graphic. I agree. I, I agree 100%. I could not believe this. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, uh that's all I can say. Did you any any final thoughts on the actual gameplay? I mean, that's really yeah. I don't even I don't even fault it for the gameplay. It's just if you're gonna have to get used to it. See, to me, I'm glad that they didn't make a Lotus style game. I think that we've got enough sort of you know like if I want to have a Lotus style experience, there's a lot of games that I can do that with. I appreciate the fact that they didn't go the normal racing route and they tried to do something a little bit different and they tried to make it contemporary. Like, to me, that, that scores big points. Was I awesome at this game? No. Do I feel like with time I could become awesome at this game? Yes. And that is a big differentiator between this game and a lot of the games that we play where I'm horrible at a game and I know that no matter what I do, I'm never going to get any better. With this game, every game that I played, I got a little bit better and I could see glimmerings of how the system worked. And now that I understand that, that how that... Um, that radar works, I bet I could get even better. Um, I there. This game kind of reminds me, it's sort of like comparing, do you remember the game Skate that came out? Yeah, uh, yeah, this very is kind, technical it's game. It's kind yeah. of like comparing Tony Hawk to Skate. Yeah, yeah, You're, that's a that's an excellent boat. Very good. You know, when it comes to that radar, and you didn't notice, I'm right there with you. I mean, I did notice it eventually, but I mean, when you're racing, you, my, like I was fully invested in watching the race. It's very captivating to watch, number one. And number two, you're panicking most of the time. Uh, yeah, Skate, this is a very technical game. What I was saying when it comes to Lowe's Tune, and you're right, this is a game that you release, and, it's, and it is out of the box. You know, it's they could have just released a, a racing game. That much said, I would love to see them just release a racing game because I would like to see this sort of graphical power unleashed. I guarantee you, if you think about the racing games that we've played on the Spectrum, you could, if you could somehow translate this level of graphics into that, you would have something really oh my unique. Gosh. Yeah, totally. You know, so I give all the credit. I get all the credit in the world uh, to these guys. Uh, uh, so so Zosa Entertainment. What a unbelievable! Now again, finished fourth. So I don't know what finished first, but we did. We probably had to take a look at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, these guys are working on a, a game. Uh, that's supposed to be really good. And I think they had other games in the contest. So, heck, they could have won it with something else. Who knows? Uh, but this this right here is a, is a big old uh, big old winner for me. Even if you're not into drifting, this is a must a must watch for the Spectrum. Even if you just watch the opening and, and marvel at it, this is a programming achievement. We should mention, we haven't even mentioned the fact, you got digitized voice in this. Mm -hmm. uh, the ref comes out, the starter guy, and he gives you the countdown. And it gives you the go, and it's all digitized, which is awesome. We rarely have seen that, Boat. Uh, so they sort of dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's with all the flash in this. Uh, I highly recommend it. Did we get any action on the old uh, Discord on this one, Boatster? We definitely did. 
Uh, we got a couple reviews here. First one comes from Frodo NL. He says, a very interesting racing game that takes some practice. Getting the car to drift is easy enough, but trying to do so while staying on the track is a different story. Once that skill is mastered, though, keeping an eye on the track radar on the bottom left helps a lot. This is, makes for a great game. Great graphics, well animated, and very fluid. The only issue is making out the track. I don't see yeah. how that could be solved, though, without ruining the whole aesthetics of the game. Yeah. Maybe making the final marker of a straight a bit different might have helped somewhat at least. All in all, a fantastic game, and that intro, 9 out of 10. Yeah. I will say, Aaron, that if you ever ha if you have to boot this game, uh, if you uh, if you're trying to, there's no way to skip the intro. That is a minor quibble that I have. Uh, you have to watch that full, and it's like a minute thirty at least watching the intro before you can actually get in there and change your controls and all that stuff. So. Listen, this is like it's like the blood money intro. Yeah. You want to, if you <laughs> ever true. skip this, That's you're true. an idiot. The only difference is the game backing it up meets the level of the intro. That's the big. I mean, the intro is cool. Yeah. It's super yeah. cool. Uh, Chris Folds writes, Drift is an unusual racing game due to the fact that there is zero racing. It is a more time trial game like you see in Rally, but yet again in Rally you're racing other competitors for time and position across exotic landscapes. In this game it's all about going around cone courses and drifting. I've come across this on modern dirt games and found them dull, and unfortunately this did not entertain me. It has great graphics, nice sound, and really appreciate such a game coming out for the Specky in this day and age, but just found it a bit a bit of a dull experience. A folds flop, 5.5 out of 10. Yeah, it's worth noting that if you do not like drifting in other games, this game will not convert you. No, you still need to load it, though. Yeah. You still need to look at it. It's it's This is a technical achievement on a grand scale, but... Paul, a.k.a. Hermsky, writes, <clears throat> A Herm firm 6 out of 10. I'm a big fan of motorsports, but found the mechanics not real, very realistic for a drifting sim. The tracks are difficult to navigate and could have been much better designed. However, a game of this style of driving must have been a very tall order for the Spectrum. I can imagine the game being a big hit if it was released in the 80s, making it a drifting original, but that's not the case. The loading screen and sound effects were impressive, but not a game I found playable from the off. I like the fact that even the new games being wrote today can explore new avenues for the Specky. That part impressed me. Yeah. And finally, D-Man writes, Visually impressive racer with a rock-hard control system, which I've still failed to master. Had this been released back in the day, I'm sure I would have stuck with it and progressed, but as it is, I can give this no more than 6.5 out of 10. You know, these scores are too low, and I'm going to tell you why. I, of course, it's personal choice. This, the technical achievement alone, it, it, right out of the gate, this is this starts at an 8. Mm -hmm. Just by this, this because this exists. I have never, I've played a lot of games on these shows, Boat. I've never been as stunned as I was when I booted this thing up. I about fell out of the chair. I could not freaking well, believe like, what I was seeing yeah. in here. Like I told you, I flat out did not believe that it would run on real hardware. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. I'm glad, it's, I'm glad it's not just me. Now, we're a couple, listen, if you're a seasoned, uh, like, specky guy, and maybe this stuff's old hat to you, but to someone like me and Boat, uh, we play a lot of 8-bit stuff, Boat. A ton of it. Oh, yeah. The, can you imagine this on the Atari or the Coco? I mean, I was just, you, Not in a million a years. Attack. Yeah, yeah. There's no way. It's just it much like I said, it's very similar to the pinball game on the Amstrad. Mm -hmm. Like, these things, these modern programmers that are taking this all over, kudos to you, sir. This is a game where someone cut no corners, and they, they put every single trick in the book in it. Now, if you're not into drifting, that's fine. But even the concept of drifting as your base game is ballsy. And mm -hmm. I give them full kudos for that. We also want to give full kudos to Frodo and L, Clive's Club member Frodo and L, for suggesting this game. A, a, yes. A, a nice pick, for sure. Yeah, Frodo. Good good job, dude. Uh, Aaron, he's not the only one we need to thank. We have a new Patreon supporter on mm. Iris and Claire this week. Yes. O'Brien's Retro and Vintage has oh, joined the fold. O'Brien's God, if they've been around. O'Brien's has been our supporter on Amiga since Jump Street since was day that? one. He and was, we, yeah. he, I, I, you know, I've got O'Brien on my Facebook boat, and I'll see his, his the the gear that he sells there, and I'm always like, man, where is this guy in America? Get him over here. O'Brien's, if it, if, please expand someday because I'm looking at this stuff like this looks great. Yeah, and we fully we fully appreciate O'Brien who's been there since Jump Street, and I'm, we're so happy to have him coming on board on on our Sinclair. Absolutely, you know it's funny, Aaron. I, I was gonna I was gonna take a look. I wanted to make sure I gave out the right uh, the right name 
uh, the right URL. And I, I looked up his webpage here. And uh, right here on the front, this is O'Brien's.no. Number one with number one with the bullet, Michael Bolton, greatest hits. Bam. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who else is a winner, Aaron, and that's all the other fine folks that support this show, including Mark Downey, Hermsky, Andrew Waite, Cap and Crispy, Laurent Giroux, Gary Heather, Eric Nelson, Harbonaut, Graham W. Vebke, Frodo NL, Tapes from the Crypt, Pixels at Dawn, Chris Folds, Paul Harrington, and Christopher Hassall. Thank you guys so much for supporting our Sinclair on Patreon. And of course, we would be remiss if we didn't thank the fine folks that are watching us live right now on the Twitch. Um, we, on the Twitch. <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've got Pixels at Dawn, Ed Van Helland, Frodo NL, Jason Warns, uh, Duncan Styles, Tanner Mirabelle's here. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Uh, we broadcast this live every Friday on uh, twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro uh, Amigos Retro Gaming. And uh, so thank you so much for hanging out with us. And uh, next week, Aaron, it is time to delve into the, the dark, dank nether regions of Gotham City. We're going to be playing Batman the Caped Crusader. All right. Boy, I've heard a lot about this game. So, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Until then, rewind tape. And press play.